From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello, and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Once again, we have a program for you that I trust will be very eye-opening. So often we want to close our eyes to what's happening in the world, but as we put our head in the sand, it doesn't change anything. And so we need to know exactly what's happening. And this first one is very revealing. It sort of has to do a little bit with what we discussed last week. Spending on warplanes fuels arms race. Is there a race out there? It certainly is. And then going on. Jihadists want to destroy Western values and Christianity. Can you believe it? They want not only to subdue it, they want to destroy it. And then thirdly, violence against Christians escalates at an alarming rate. And certainly we can see that. So often, though, we don't read about it that much in the newspaper or hear uh, anchors talk about it on the networks. But we need to be talking about what's happening to Christians all over the world. Now, you remember last week we showed you the dangers of the gathering nuclear storm. Remember that? I want to show you the first picture once again of uh, what we discussed last week. The gathering nuclear storm, and there you see, there is Iran, China, Russia, and North Korea. Lulled to believe nuclear catastrophe died with the Cold War, America is blind to rising dragons. That's what this is all about. They are rising, rising together. The Sino-Russian axis. Joint naval exercises are another sign that dictatorships are stepping in to fill the void in an era of American retreat. Now, you know what? Those are dictators. The ones that I just showed you there. Pretty much a dictator. The next U.S. president will have to move swiftly to reassert American power, lest that void grow larger. Be careful of the next president. Yeah, absolutely. And then one more here. And not only are they uh, escalating, you know, on the ground, the water with naval exercises, but also in the air, spending on warplanes, fuels, arms, race. You notice all about the, the races to get arms and to be the first one to get it. Russian and Chinese programs become U.S. Air Force's most pressing challenge. Yes, it is. Now, Jack is going to fill us in with some more information about uh, the four people that I showed you right up front and the four nations, how they're combining together for a real uh, march on Israel and also against the United States, right, Jack? Oh, last week the Lord came on us. And I'll tell you, I was shocked because for 60 of my 70 years in the ministry, I have been preaching the coming war with Russia according to the Bible. And through that message, God brought millions to Christ. But listen to me. I picked up the Wall Street Journal last week and I said, Rex, oh, Look at this. It's what I've been preaching for all these years, and now they're backing me. In the Wall Street Journal, it said that the four major countries in the world, Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran, all with atomic weapons, are going to strike out at the United States of America soon. And the Congress has voted to get ready for a war that might come through atomic weaponry. And that's Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. And that's what's going to happen because at the Euphrates River, we are told that when they come from China, they come through on dry ground. What? Yes. How? Turkey has the greatest equipment today to dry up the Euphrates for a battle and for a war. Everything is just like I've preached it. And now I'm reading it in the newspapers. And 
everyone who's ever heard me go say, Van Impey was right, it's here. Well, in Ezekiel 38 and 39, we have Russia and Revelation 16, 12, and uh, Daniel 11, 44, we have the East and the West, and that's China, of course, along with North Korea. The, come from the East, Revelation 16, 12 is so plain, so clear. And then there's Iran, and Iran hates America. All four of these nations want to wipe us off the map. And I'm telling you, we better get right with God and start living for the Lord because we're in danger. Now, the worst problem is we got a bunch of preachers that don't have a heart for the things of God. I'm sick of these evangelicals who will not preach anything. One of the Christian magazines just said we sent... Uh, questionnaires to all the evangelical ministers. 90% of them said, we will not preach anything that frightens people because we want to preach feel-good messages. Well, then you're out of the will of God. God's not interested in you preaching little sermonettes that make Christianettes. He wants you to preach the Word. The Holy Spirit wrote this book. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost when they wrote this book. And listen to 2 Timothy 4, 2. This is a command from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Preach the Word. Be instant, in season and out of season, when they like it, when they don't like it. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears, preachers so tickle their ears, and that's what some of you guys are, and you ought to get out of the ministry if you're not going to preach the Word. And I mean business. I'm sick of what I'm seeing out there. If the men who wrote this book, eight of them in the New Testament alone, did what you're doing, we'd never have Christianity in existence today. They gave their lives. You guys who love your ease, listen to this. Matthew was pounded to did with a hollow bread in the head till he was gone. Oh my. Mark was tied to wild horses that pulled him through the streets till the flesh was off of his body. Yeah. Luke was hanged in an olive tree. John was thrown into a cauldron of boiling oil and survived it, but he was disfigured for life. And one day he saw his image in a mirror and he said, oh, Lord, look at my face. I did it for you. And I'm so glad you let, let me write first, John 3, 2, when we see Jesus, mm. we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. How do you like that? What have you ever suffered for Jesus? Preaching your little ditties every Sunday and with your rock bands. Let's go a little further. The apostle Peter was crucified. James, when he was 74 years of age, was made to kneel before men who said, if you renounce Jesus, you can go home. If not, we'll kill you. He said, he has never failed me. I won't fail him now. And they brought the club down on his head till he was gone. But to be absent from the body was to be with the Lord. He wasn't sorry. Oh, it just goes on and on. Listen to me. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one of us may receive the things done in his body according to that which he has done, whether it be good or bad. You're going to pay for it. You're going to stand there ashamed when he says to the saints of God, the New Testament writers and others, and the millions that have died in the last few centuries as Christians, as the Muslims and others killed them. Jesus will say to them, every one of them, as they wear the martyr's crown, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But can you imagine what God's going to say to you with your foolishness? No heart for the gospel, no burden for souls. How much time do you pray? How much time do you read the Bible? How many times do you knock on doors to win people to Christ? It's a life of ease. Preacher, get ready. And some of you are doing it for all the money you can rake together. Million dollar homes. Six million dollar homes. The money you get from a lot of little poor people. 
I am so convicted about this that for seven years, and I'm not bragging, I have refused any salary. I'm living on our Social Security. And when I read about you guys, I say, God, bring a Holy Ghost revival and turn their minds and their hearts to do something for Jesus instead of living for this world. It's soon going to pass away. The Wall Street Journal said the atom bombs are soon going to be falling in America. And your $6 million home will be blown up and all the things for which you were. God is against the worldliness of these preachers who sit there and beg for money every week. I have never asked for money on this program, and I never will. We offer our video and book. That's it. God forgive you. Oh, you know, Jack, Ed, those donations are so precious, you know, because they help us to stay on the air. We want to reach the world with the gospel. But, you know, you've really moved my heart. That was so moving, wasn't it? To hear about all the, the ones who've given their lives for the Lord, and it's happening right now. Not just back then, but it's happening right now. We all know the aggression of the Islamic terrorism, don't we? I'd like you to take a look at this next headline, if you will, please. Islamic State tries to trigger war of religions in the West. And you know what they're saying? What we want to do, our supporters and sympathizers, let's focus on something. Let's break all the crosses. Oh, my. And then going on, here's something. I've read this to you before. The official motto of the Muslim Brotherhood is, Allah is our objective, the Prophet is our leader, the Quran is our law, dying is the way of Allah, is our highest hope, as it promotes jihad and holy war. You know, to me, that just moves my heart, too, that they want war. That's not what the Lord wants, Jack. I want to tell you something. We've got a president that's backing Islam every time he gets to turn the corner. He's done things against us, preparing the way for these guys. You don't say anything about them. You say nice things. Uh, they're a religion of peace. Bunk! Did you hear what the Brotherhood says? And that guy's in prison right now because of the trouble he tried to stir up in Egypt as the president, and they put him out. He says, Jihad! Holy war! is our goal. And so Mr. Obama comes along and says, oh, yes, but that's only ISIS, just that one group. Bunk! Listen to me. you got Al-Qaeda. You have the Boko Herons. You have the Brotherhood, just quoted. You have Hamas and Hezbollah over there in Israel. And then you have the keepers of China, 10 million of them, who just went into a railroad station with hatchets and started chopping everyone to pieces. And you have the Taliban. There are at least nine or 10 major Muslim organizations who want to kill everybody they can. And you're going to hear in a few minutes that even in America, they took a survey and 51% of the Muslims who live here say we want Sharia law. You'll hear about that in a moment. That's killing from the word go. I was surprised, Jack, when I read that uh, headline. It was really shocking. But take a look at something else they're trying to do around the world, if you will, please. Magazi Hero. Jihadists want to destroy Western values and uh, Christianity. I know some Muslim people that are very, very sweet people, but they're not following what the Quran has to say. They would like to have some changes within the religion. And, uh, you know, I was quite uh, moved as I read that article to you about Christianity. They want to destroy Christianity. Is that correct, Jack? Oh, yes. And do you know why? Because they hate Jesus. They are persecuted for the cross of Christ when they chop their heads off. And that's what they're doing. You say, how can you prove that? Galatians 6.12, persecuted for the cross of Christ. And in Galatians 6.14, listen to the Apostle Paul, as I already said, he was beheaded for Jesus. And in Galatians 6.14, he says, God forbid that I should glory in anything 
but the cross of Christ, for whom I'm crucified unto the world, and the world's crucified unto me. He had his neck cut off, which is the Muslim way, the sword, Revelation 20, verse 4. Jack, all of that means so very, very much to my heart. We need to be revealing what the Bible has to say and praying for all of those who are suffering around the world. Please don't forget them in your prayers. Well, I want to focus on Europe right now. The aggression that they've had over there is dramatic. They go right into a cathedral and kill a priest. That's in France. Well, look at this. Former Al-Qaeda terrorists training Islamic State cells in Europe. ISIS calls on terrorists in Europe to increase pace of attacks. How can you do that? You've got so many attacks already. They want to increase it. ISIL able to move freely around Europe using stolen passports. Stolen? Yes, stolen passports. Islamic scholar. Europe may be heading toward civil war. Oh, my. And then Islamic State may already have biological chemical weapons in Europe. Oh, my. If they have that, they can really dramatically go across Europe. Muslim clerics. ISIS infiltrating Europe through migrants. Got to be careful. Know who they are. You know, they're in Germany. They regret that they let so many in. A million. And then ISIS admits using migration. There you have it for terror. If door of migration closes, door of jihad opens. Can you believe that? Oh, my friends, how we need to not only be praying, but we need to try. The United States needs to try and stop all of this. Do you agree with that, Jack? Oh, Rexella, yes. We need a good leader that will take a stand against these migrants and all the rest. Now, some of them are good people. In Germany, they now have 3,500 migrants that they baptized, but they came out of the churches that threw them out in Islam because they were Christians in those churches. But they've been baptized in Germany by Lutheran ministers, praise oh, the Lord. Great. But Rexella, I'm sick of these hypocrites in the churches of America. They're doing nothing but sit there and beg for money and they want a $64 million jet. Come on, act like a human being and a good Christian, will you? Quit living for filthy lucre. I mean it, we need a Holy Ghost revival. Now, Rexella, I've got here 400 names, and these are ministers who have turned against Jesus. And I may be using these two weeks from now and name some of them. They come out of every Protestant denomination. I want to tell you something. I have preached citywide crusades with 10 million people, and I have had 10,000 pastors sponsor me. And I'm telling you, I know many of the ministers, and if they're really saved, it'll shock me when I see them in heaven. Why? Titus 1.16, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work, reprobate, hypocrite. That's pretty clear, isn't it? Jesus said there should be false Christs and false prophets. Matthew 24, verses 11 to 24. And the apostle Peter said in 2 Peter 2, 1, there were false prophets among the people, as there shall be false teachers among you who privately, secretly, will bring in damnable heresies, even denying Jesus. And you guys that signed the Yale Covenant, that's your crowd. You know, Jack, I praise the Lord that you're not willing to compromise. He's not willing to compromise because the Bible is absolute in what it has to say. God wrote it, and we need to stand upon the Word of God, don't we? Thank you, Jack. I really appreciate that. Well, let's concentrate for a moment now on what's happening to the Christians around the world, too. Over in Syria, more than a million are living, uh, you know, after they've been besieged in their, their cities. Unimaginable. Suffering reaches almost medieval scale. 
as one million people live under the siege. That's what I mentioned. Police arrest dozens in Pakistan Christian attack. Christian attack. Violence against Egypt's Christians escalates at alarming rate. One of my friends just brought, uh, her husband rather, brought all his relatives to the United States because they are Christians. They're being persecuted in Egypt. Italy sets high security perimeter around the Colosseum after jihadist threat. They want to do away with the Roman Colosseum. Can you imagine that one? Churches burned and mem members threatened with violence. The reality of being a Christian in Cuba. Hey, I thought once we lifted the embargo and everything else would be different there. No. Christians are still being threatened. This is communism. Yes. In France, the jihadists have won. That's what they're saying. Well, they're saying it because they could go right into a church and kill a priest right there. And here you see something that is a little surprising to some people. As fears grow, gun sales soar in Switzerland. Now the demand for weapons in this politically neutral nation has skyrocketed amid increased attacks in Europe. Now Jack has said over and over that if we want to have a weapon for our protection, it's a biblical uh, permission. The Lord says, have something and uh, sell your garment if you have to and buy a sword. That's why Peter had one there in the garden, Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something right now and listen carefully. We have a president who's done everything to keep Christians out of the White House, but allow the Muslims free reign. And that's according to the statement of Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham. Thank you, Franklin, for speaking up like I do. And another thing, my Savior said, and you can either follow Obama and Hillary, or you can follow Jesus. And that, my friend, is Luke 22, 36. Jesus saying it. If you don't have a sword, sell your garments and buy one. And some of you wives won't let your husband have that weapon. He needs it. They're going into the malls. They're doing crazy things, killing everywhere. I could name a dozen different places, Milwaukee and the rest. You need protection. Jesus said so. And he also, in the commandments, talked about this. If anyone kills a person, he should be killed. And if they're coming at you, take care of your family and yourself. Yes, Jack, the Lord wants us to take care of our families. And he's given us permission to do that. And he said, if you don't have that sword, you sell your garment and buy one. Well, friends, we've been giving you a lot of bad news. You're saying to yourself, is there any good news out there? Yes, there is. The one great thing, the good news I can share with you is that Jesus is coming. He's going to put a stop to all this. I've said it a thousand times. He's going to put a stop to all this. And he said, let not your heart be troubled. I'll be back. And if he comes, are you ready? Oh, I trust that when Jack prays this prayer in a moment, You'll pray it with him. Ask Jesus, Son of God, Savior of the world, to be your Savior. Will you do that? Forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Will you do that, Jack? Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. He'll give you peace in the midst of a confused world. Pray it now, Lord Jesus. We've all sinned, and we all need forgiveness. And Lord Jesus, your blood cleanses from every sin, and I trust in you today, Jesus, yes. in your shed blood to wash me, cleanse me, and save me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart now. Save me. I love you, Jesus. I want to be with you. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer with Jack? Then you are God's child. You've just been born into the family of God and forgiven of your sins. Write to me. There's my address. I will be so happy to send you this wonderful little book, First Steps in a New Direction. And I guarantee you will have the peace of God in your heart right now.
So let me hear from you. And now I want you to know that we're, we're drawing this to a conclusion very soon. This wonderful, wonderful offer of the week. Thy kingdom come arriving soon. Take a look at the promo, please. Christians have been praying the Lord's Prayer for over 2,000 years, and it's about to happen. Here's an excerpt. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Soon Christ will break through the heavens as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Every major prophecy warns it's about to occur. It's closing time. Who says so? The mystery of Pope 113 is about the present Pope Francis, who through a rigged election by dishonest cardinals broke all voting rules that produce the apostate Pope. The damnable doctrine St. Peter predicted would come, even denying Jesus, has infiltrated both Catholicism and Protestantism. The Yale Covenant names 300 Protestant leaders and their denominations. In order to join this apostate group, each minister had to call their God Allah. For all the exciting facts, order doctors Jack and Rexella's tremendous video, Thy Kingdom Come, arriving soon. Oh my, oh my, oh my, please make that call, will you? There's the 800 number and there's the address. And remember, I'll be sending you as a bonus two of our recent programs concerning all of this. So, oh, it's such a wonderful, wonderful offer. Don't put it off. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Thy Kingdom Come, arriving soon. Have your credit card ready and call toll free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Eppie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Eppie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NIA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And I just want to say, Jesus is coming soon, and all the biblical prophecies are in place pointing to his return. So please make the call right away, and I'll be sending you those two very special programs. I trust that you will be able to share with others. There's the 800 number, and there's the address. So please write to us or call. We'll have to get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Thy kingdom come, arriving soon. That's good news, isn't it? You know, friends, I just want to say that the outlook is very, very bad, isn't it? And uh, people can get down as they look around. But I want to give you an encouraging thought right here. To improve your outlook, keep looking up how good. And I love to end our program always by saying we'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, please remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very much. Bye-bye.